My name is Fei Li. I'm an assistant professor at the Urban Studies Institute uh, at Georgia State. So housing is considered a wicked problem because of its complexity and the lack of a simple solution. The often mentioned housing issues like housing shortages, housing bubbles, lack of affordability, housing insecurity, these all involve processes and theories examined in various fields of study, including geography, sociology, economics, engineering, and urban studies. So studying these issues using the lens of only one discipline can only understand certain aspects of the problem, but not the whole picture. Another common feature of wicked problems is that addressing one aspect of the problem may cause unintended consequences or actually worsen other aspects of the problem. For example, simply increasing new constructions to provide more housing may not necessarily provide enough affordable housing. Uh, in fact, redevelopment projects that add more housing units to an area could lead to the loss of existing affordable housing in that area, uh, increasing housing costs or gentrification and displacement. Another example is that housing policy is intended to pro uh, protect certain groups in the housing market, such as uh, rent control that pr protect tenants by itself could indirectly hurt the same people it's trying to protect by discouraging renting um, and discourage renter mobility so it can limit the amount of rentals available to new tenants. So to create a comprehensive solution to housing problems required expertise and collaboration of multiple disciplines. Over 80% of Americans live in urban and suburban communities, and the biggest gaps between the supply and demand of housing, especially affordable housing, usually exist in cities. Urban studies look at housing as an integral part of the complex system that is a city. Researchers in this field may approach housing issues from a variety of different perspectives. For example, we may investigate urban housing issues through the lens of racial equity, urban spatial structure, or urban governance. My own research examines how certain policies shape urban housing markets and how housing development contributes to segregation and spatial inequalities in cities. My recent housing project examined a policy program called uh, Inclusionary Zoning or Inclusionary Housing. The idea is to ask developers to include a proportion of affordable housing when building market rate housing projects, therefore increasing the supply of affordable housing, especially in high demand, high growth neighborhoods. I looked at this policy in London and examined the placement of affordable housing units from inclusionary housing. By design, inclusionary housing should address both the shortage of affordable housing and the spatial concentration of affordable housing in disadvantaged neighborhoods. But in practice, there can be often a trade-off between securing more affordable housing and placing them in areas that provide better amenities and better access to jobs and services for the residents. I found that the implementation of inclusionary housing in London still created more affordable housing in poorer neighborhoods with existing concentration of affordable housing units. The next project along this line will examine the wealth redistribution effect of inclusionary housing in London. Part of the affordable units created under inclusionary housing I gradually transferred to tenants through a shared ownership model, where after a certain period of time, the tenants can buy off 100% of housing equity of their affordable unit. As home ownership is an important pathway to wealth accumulation and housing security, this can help address long-term housing and wealth inequality. I will compare the home values of shared ownership units and market rate units to see how the shared ownership model has helped redistribute housing wealth. Atlanta is one of the fastest growing metro areas in the United States. The population growth is accompanied with growth in housing demand, including speculation and housing costs. Urban renewal projects and developments also accelerated this process in many parts of the metro area, causing gentrification and displacement of low-income residents. The construction of Beltline and new apartment complexes along the Beltline is a prime example and contributed to the skyrocketing rents in adjacent neighborhoods. To mitigate the effects of the Beltline and West Side on housing affordability, Atlanta adopted inclusion zoning in 2020 to provide affordable housing in multifamily rental developments with 10 or more units in these districts. Compared to London, the inclusion zoning program in Atlanta is much more limited in scale and geographical coverage, and its effects on housing affordability in these neighborhoods remain to be seen. 
Many of our students live or have lived in neighborhoods near Beltline and have felt the effects of neighborhood change in the past few years. The rent hike might have forced some students out of their previous apartments or neighborhoods or added additional financial strain during their studies. During the pandemic, some of our students might also have experienced housing insecurity or eviction. Housing issues affect everyone in modern societies, especially those with limited income, such as college students. As individual students, one can make a positive impact on housing issues by staying informed and engaging in local political and policy discussions related to housing, advocating for programs that support development and preservation of affordable housing, volunteering or donating to nonprofit organizations that address homelessness and housing insecurity, and participating in community events, meetings, and research studies that focus on housing issues. Urban studies is inherently interdisciplinary and interconnected with many disciplines in social and physical science, such as geography, sociology, economics, political science, environmental science, etc. My current research focuses on the interaction between urban environments and health. Housing, transportation, infrastructure, and many other factors related to the built environment are important social determinants of health. They can affect individual health outcomes and population level health disparities. So addressing wicked urban problems like the housing crisis is an essential part of building healthy and resilient cities and communities.